Hey everyone, Ro here. Today we have a conversation that's really been floating through my mind since our last conversation about Marnius Kalgar earlier in the week. And that's how the once rumoured Imperium Civil War may not be quite dead and buried yet. General spoiler warning to begin as the events we are discussing today are from across the Warhammer 40k universe, so you have been warned. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. Okay, so back when the whole 40k universe had its big shakeup, with Gilliman returning and the Primaris first being introduced, it wasn't long before the narrative really started to highlight an uncomfortable relationship between the original firstborn marines and their newly arrived counterparts in the Primaris. These warriors forged by Belisarius' call were not only an adaptation to the Emperor's own work, but also placed their loyalty and praise as much to Mars as they do Terra. Something inconceivable to the firstborn marines. And while this frosty relationship really felt like it was becoming more intense and widespread across the entire Imperium, and the one-time inconceivable notion of a civil war was fast becoming an actual possibility. But then, just as it felt things were beginning to reach a boiling point, it seemed to all fade away. Major characters such as Marnius Kalgar begun to cross the Rubicon Primaris themselves, and he was quickly followed by other prominent names such as Mephiston of the Blood Angels and Ragnar Blackmane of the Space Wolves to name too. And as such, the Primaris became the dominant force of the chapters, and thus any thought of the possible civil war was largely forgotten. However, while a war within chapters may have become a notion of the past, I wouldn't completely write out a civil war within the Astartes yet. And one of the main reasons for this is the big timeline shift backwards. Now, originally, we were experiencing this new 40k universe after Gilliman's Grand Indomitus Crusades had concluded. However, with the big timeline retcon, we've been taken back straight within the Indomitus period, and only the first phase of Gilliman's Crusade has taken place. Now, the reason I've begun to feel this is more important than ever is whilst I was diving back into Dark Imperium to establish Marnius Kalgar's mindset, I really begun to feel that the moment Gilliman re-established the Tektrarchs and forcibly claimed control of the 500 worlds into Astartes' control, forcibly claimed that control, that this was a major decision with huge implications, most of which we may have yet to see. If you haven't read Dark Imperium in a while, I really do recommend you go back and give it a read, because yes, while its sequels may have had more Primarch action, I dare say it's this first instalment of the trilogy that is the most impactful, particularly the scene where Gilliman has assembled his sons governors, and other political figures to outline his grand plans. Now, after announcing and naming his selections for the new Tetrarchs, and how they shall govern this newly reacquired realm, one particular governor begins to question Gilliman, only for the Primarch to immediately announce that eight new chapters of his sons will be stationed within Ultramar as well alongside the Ultramarines themselves and the Scythes of the Emperor chapter, who are to be rebuilt after their almost complete destruction. And this causes an absolute uproar from the human men and women present, and honestly, rightly so. Gilliman, in the space of a few short minutes, has not only announced his intentions to forcibly claim territory and planets from governors who are completely loyal to the Imperium, who have done nothing except loyally serve the throne and defend its people, 
but then in one swift stroke, literally prevents any attempt at opposition by establishing eight chapters within this realm. It's almost like a hostile takeover. In fact, it's not almost like one at all. It's exactly a hostile takeover. An occupying military force keeping down the local native population. And just think about that for a moment. Because this is Rebute Gilliman we're talking about here. One of the most famed Primarchs for showcasing his humanity. Immediately after this is announced, a female diplomat bravely speaks up to the Primarch himself, declaring that he's making his own legion, and asking him just what is his intentions. And despite Gilliman arguing back that he himself forbid the legions, in essence saying how dare you question me, she continues to follow up with the argument, of the unnumbered sons being legions in all but name. And here as the questions and dismay from the human populace rises, Gilliman simply sweeps it all aside, resolute in his declaration that the High Lords of Terror gave them their powers. But he speaks for his father himself, the Emperor of Mankind, and he will do what he must to defend the Imperium. And now I think it's worth pointing out here that I do believe Gilliman's intentions are well founded. I believe he's returned to the current Imperium and been absolutely dismayed by the corruption of power he has found, even from the High Lords of Terror no less. So in taking away true power from these long established governors, he is aiming to break that inbred establishment. However, it really must be said, are his actions any different from those he seeks to remove? And the reason why I feel this is so important with the timeline shift is because we are taken back right into the heart of this moment. No longer are we truly talking in a past tense. No longer are we talking of issues from decades or centuries previously. Gilliman's unnumbered sons are still fresh in the memory. And in fact, there's going to be more crusades to come. We are experiencing these moments as they progress. And let's be real here and look at Gilliman's actions. He has unleashed thousands upon thousands of new Primaris Marines across the Imperium, who in truth it could be said, are not loyal to the High Lords of Terror or even the Throne World. They are first and foremost loyal to him. He has forged together fleets of Marines which in essence are a legion in all but name when the only memory of the legions in this Imperium are the legends of how they nearly destroyed it, how they are the reason the Emperor is imprisoned to the Golden Throne. He has removed several High Lords of Terror from power and established himself as Regent of the entire Imperium, accountable to no one. And now, he is forcibly claiming control of the realm of Ultramar from loyal Imperial governors, expanding its borders and installing a force of 10,000 Space Marines who are truly loyal only to him. One his own chapter and the other 9,000 of which are not only his successors but exclusively Primaris, essentially ensuring no one can oppose him. When you lay it all out like that, you can really see why there is such a vocal opposition to the Primarch's actions. And now we get to the real heart of the entire matter, because it certainly seems that the revelation of the unremembered empire is about to be exposed. A history of Rebute Gilliman establishing his own Imperium. And I'll admit, when I first read Godblight, 
I really thought that this wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, he was doing what he thought right. He thought his father and Terra were gone. He wanted only to keep the dream alive. But considering all of those points we've just gone through, and now comes to light that when he was around 10,000 years ago, in the greatest time of turmoil to ever bestride the Imperium, as the Emperor himself needed each and every one of his sons by his side, Rebute Gilliman was building his own Imperium in Ultramar. And even more damning than that, he never even made it to Terra. He was not there when his father needed him most. Arriving only after the fighting, and being named Lord Commander himself, just as he is now. And what is he doing now? Building his own empire once again. Man, as much as you can see Gilliman's intentions are in the right place, when you look at it from that outside point of view, man, you begin to understand just why he gets so much opposition sometimes. And let's not forget, he has just put down an attempted rebellion by former High Lords. The former High Lords of Terror that he removed. And this is all really why I feel that possible civil war may just be coming back into focus. Gilliman has to all intents and purposes raised himself a legion. And really used it to annex his own piece of territory which I would be very surprised if many of the other Astartes' bloodlines didn't at least begin to raise an eyebrow at. The Wolves of Fenris? The Sons of the Lion? Even the Sons of the Khan? I could see particular hesitancy in regards to the Primarch's actions there, and the ordinary humans in power across the Imperium, some legitimately concerned, others no doubt corrupt, We've already witnessed their feelings on the matter. Once this new revelation comes to pass, I certainly don't see it getting any easier. And in fact, a whole lot worse. And man, we haven't even mentioned the Ecclesiarchy in this discussion today, which is another whole kettle of fish. So as much as we may have felt we'd left those civil war possibilities in the past, Upon reflection, it actually feels like we're more closer now than ever. But as always guys, what do you think? Do you think Gilliman is going the wrong way about remaking Ultramar in his image? Or is this the only way that it can be done in this war-ravaged Imperium? Has Gilliman begun to lose some of his compassion? And is he beginning to act more like a dictator? and less like the man he was. And how far do you think he can push it before sons of his brothers may begin to reject? As always guys, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support truly means a lot to me, it really does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too? But with that said, I am off and I'll see you all again real soon.